You're listening to a live broadcast of the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to cover the plan for world domination by the by the adepts of the hidden mystery religion which is called Mystery Babylon. It is an ancient body of adepts of the highest degrees of all of the so-called fraternal orders and secret societies. They have been attempting over many hundreds of years to complete what they call the great work. And ladies and gentlemen, we're in the last days of their bringing to fruition the culmination of all of their machinations and intrigue and subterfuge and subversion over all of those years. The name of the plan as I saw it when I was a member of the Office of Naval Intelligence and specifically a member of the Intelligence Briefing Team of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet is Majesty 12. No separation between the two words. In other words, written as if it's all one word in all capital letters. So don't go away. Make sure you have pen and paper by your side and pay very close attention.
Well, as we have done the day before, yesterday and yesterday, I'm going to back up a little bit and repeat some of what you heard yesterday so that there is no misunderstanding. And just in case somebody new is tuning in, they won't get all of it because they've missed. They've missed the first two hours of this expose. But they will at least understand the topic of conversation today. In other words, we're not going to come right in the middle of something, ladies and gentlemen. If I sounded a little remote at the beginning of this broadcast, it's because the equipment here was not operating properly. And I was uh, attempting to talk to you while half of my attention was trying to uh, make sure that the equipment is operating correctly. So uh, that's why I may have sounded a little distant in the beginning of this broadcast. Folks, make sure you have pen and paper. You're going to want to remember some of this. Many of you are probably so angry by now, you're certainly going to want to check up on all of it and prove me wrong. And I certainly encourage you to do that. And if anyone can prove me wrong on any of the information that I have given you over this broadcast, then I want to know about it because I certainly want to check your proof. And I don't expect you to just call me and and rail on me and say that I'm wrong, if you furnish me with proof and, and you're polite and, and, uh, and responsible, I will certainly check out what you tell me or what you show me. And if you turn out to be right, folks, I will come on the air and, uh, and will correct whatever mistake I have made. Nothing that I'm giving you is intended to mislead you. None of it is... Uh, is disinformation or false, according to all of the research that I've done and the documentation that I have, and what I saw while a member of the Office of Naval Intelligence many years ago, and specifically as a member of the intelligence briefing team of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet. Everything that I'm telling you is absolutely true, correct, is documented and sourced, is the product of, of not only what I saw in the Navy, but many, many years of research, not only by me, but the members of all of the organizations which I head, and other prominent researchers throughout the country and even the world. So, this doesn't just come from me, ladies and gentlemen. It comes from many people. Many of us duplicate the research in order to make sure that we are correct. And uh, you had better take heed, folks, because an awful lot of work, many years, many years, a lot, of risk and exposure to danger and, and, uh, and hurt, terrible hurt, is the result of the information that we have discovered. Some of us have been attacked, beaten. Some of us have been killed. Some of us have been terribly slandered and libeled in order to keep the public from learning what I have been delivering to you over the last two days, and will continue in this broadcast today. Most of you have no conception of what the reality of the world on a political and social and economic level really is. You're wrapped up in your families and in your work, and you think that that's all that you need to do because you've elected somebody that you trust and you've sent them off to represent you. And they will never do you wrong. And it can't happen here in the United States of America. But folks, you're wrong. And that's exactly why it is happening here because whether you want to admit it or not or whether you like it or not, you have abdicated your responsibility as the watchdog, as the sovereign citizen in this country. And so those who can be corrupted have been corrupted. Those who would not be corrupted have been framed, have been libeled, have been slandered, have been shunted to the side, shifted out of government over the years. This may shock you, ladies and gentlemen, but it is the truth. Listen to me very carefully. A one-world socialist government is the stated and avowed policy of the United States government. The United Nations didn't spring up 
out of some bubbling pool of goo back in some swamp somewhere, the United States created the United Nations. And if you don't believe that, you get into your history books and you'll find out that it's absolutely true. And the members of the United States government that we sent to create the United Nations and participate in the writing of the United Nations Charter later were arrested, tried, convicted, and were sent to prison as members of a subversive group of spies acting on behalf of the Soviet Union, members of the Communist Party, the most prominent, two of which were Mr. Chambers and Mr. Alger Hiss. The United States State Department wrote the policy in the document known as State Department Publication 7277, which for those of you who have not seen it, includes an introduction by President Truman, who was a 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite, which admits the United States government's world government policy. State Department Publication 7277 further outlines the merger of the military of the United States with the military of the Eastern Bloc nations, what used to be known as the Warsaw Pact or the Soviet Union, as a world peacekeeping force under the United Nations as the ultimate goal of the foreign policy of the United States of America. NATO, that's the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, is a part of the United Nations. It is not a separate force, and it is not a force of the United States of America. NATO is a part of the United Nations and was created under its auspices according to the United Nations Charter and at the approval of the United Nations Security Council. It's all in the treaty, ladies and gentlemen, which you have never read. The Warsaw Pact was also a part of the United Nations and was also created under its auspices according to the United Nations Charter. The Cold War was a scam perpetrated between two military organizations, NATO and the Warsaw Pact, in order to create a diversion, an illusion, if you will. You see, they both belong to the same organization, the United Nations. They were both overseen, run by, and ruled by the United Nations and the United Nations Security Council. There was never any danger of war between the United States of America and the Soviet Union. The Cold War, in fact, was a scam which allowed both governments to levy large taxes which were used to develop the technology and experiment with techniques which will be combined to control the population of the world. The inclusion of Warsaw Pact nations as new members of NATO today, now, as I speak, is the initial stage of Phase 2 of the merger of forces outlined in State Department Publication 7277. And the purpose, the real purpose, for the illusion of the fall of the Soviet Union was so this could be brought about and so that the West could be deceived into disarming. President Kennedy presented the plan to disarm the nations and people of the world to the United Nations. The United States planted the seed of a European Union, nurtured that idea, and has supported its formation. When the leader of the USSR banged his shoe on his desk at the United Nations and screamed, quote, We do not have to invade the United States. We will destroy you from within, end quote. He was absolutely correct. Those of you alive at the time who were watching television and reading your newspapers and paying attention know that that was Nikita Khrushchev who made that statement and banged his shoe on that desk. The progression of accomplishments toward the completion of the plan to implement one world socialist totalitarian government is guided and controlled by the hierarchy of the Illuminati in the groups known as the Council on Foreign Relations the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Group, the Round Table Group, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, and many others, including the Illuminati Adepts in Government and Industry, who are members of the Supreme Council of the 33rd degree of the ancient and accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry of the Southern and Northern Jurisdiction, the Supreme Council of the York Rite of Freemasonry, International Zionism, B'nai B'rith, the Grand Lodge of France, 
the Grand Lodge of England, the Order of the Golden Dawn, the Ordo Templi Orientalis, the Rosi Cruci, the Sovereign and Military Order of the Knights of Malta, the Knights Templar, the Jason Society, the Vatican, and many others too numerous to list. And if you want to see a list of all of these secret organizations, which will literally blow your mind, and you can go directly to their sites on the Internet and read their own teachings and writings and philosophy and goals and everything else, go to our webpage, which is harvest-trust.org. That's harvest-trust.org. You don't need www. It's just http colon forward slash forward slash harvest dash trust dot org. Click on the occult link on our homepage. And when you're finished there, click on the secret societies link in the occult page. And uh, you will see that these organizations are so numerous, it will absolutely amaze you especially those of you who have always thought that these secret societies were some kind of popular myth and they don't really exist and they don't really do these things. Well, folks, most of them admit it in their own words and you can read it yourself, so just do that. There are other links on our homepage and on our website that you will also be interested in. The American public is being bombarded with propaganda to enable them to accept the New World Order, give up their Constitution and their Bill of Rights and their heritage as Americans, and become citizen slaves in this New World Socialist Utopian State. These propaganda attacks become obvious with people like Mr. Leavitt and Mr. Harris are arrested and falsely charged by the Gestapo murderers who orchestrated the World Trade Center, the Waco Massacre, the Ruby Ridge murder of Vicki Weaver by an FBI sniper, the bombing of the Alfred P. Mura Federal Building in Oklahoma City, of the Federal Bureau of Investigation with planning an anthrax attack. This is recent, and this is why I cite it, so that you can see how your minds are screwed around by these people. The Marxist press immediately mounted a vicious campaign of lies against these two men. They were accused of being white supremacist militia members who were followers of Christian identity who planned to launch an anthrax attack upon New York City. Well, folks, that was impossible because Mr. Leavitt is Jewish. And he's not any of those things. And Mr. Harris is not any of those things either. The truth is that they were attempting to manufacture a vaccine which could be used to protect the general population from just such an attack. The fact is that the so-called deadly biological anthrax weapon, which they were supposed to have, was the very vaccine which they had developed in order to protect the public from the biological attacks which we know will eventually come. Mr. Harris is a microbiologist. This is not the first time that they have tried to put him in prison on false charges, ladies and gentlemen. They don't want us to have protection against what they also know is coming. Now, why do they do this when ultimately they have to admit the truth? It's because most people are not people at all, ladies and gentlemen. They've never had an original thought in their life. And they don't think. They listen and believe whatever they are told because they have been indoctrinated to behave in that manner. So when it was eventually announced that these men had to be released because what they were carrying was in fact not a deadly anthrax germ that, and not that they were going to kill people with it, but that it was a harmless vaccine... When they finally had to admit that, ladies and gentlemen, nobody listened to that. The only thing that most of the sheeple in this country and around the world will remember is that two men were arrested in Las Vegas with a deadly anthrax germ, a biological weapon, with which they were going to attack and kill hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of people. 
It was all a lie. And this happens all the time, ladies and gentlemen. Do you remember the attack upon the patriots? The people who love this country and would be willing to give their life in defense of the Constitution for the United States of America and have always been the ones who have fought and died for freedom and for this country throughout the history of the United States of America. Do you remember that right after the Oklahoma City bombing, remember the vicious Marxist press attacks against these people and against the lawful and constitutionally organized militia in this nation, which have been a part of this nation, which are spelled out in the law, which have fought most of the battles of this nation throughout the history of the United States of America, were responsible for freeing the slaves in the Civil War, were the ones who fought the revolution to create the United States of America? Do you know why these people are being attacked, ladies and gentlemen, even though eventually the Federal Bureau of Investigation admitted in a press conference that patriots and militia members were not involved in the bombing of the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building in Oklahoma City? Most of you still think that they were. And the press still tries to hammer that in to make you believe it. Just last Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, on CNN, they did a special, a special, ladies and gentlemen, about a man in Utah who would not stop for a police officer. A man who has a long history of being a Nazi, a real Nazi, and of making statements that he would love to kill the FBI and all kinds of other things. They did a special on him, and they left you with the impression that he is a patriot militia member. American patriots are not Nazis, ladies and gentlemen. American patriots do not act like this man does. This was intentional propaganda. He is not a part of any militia in this country. And I can tell you that with absolute certainty, because I am one of the top leaders of the militia in this country. In fact, I am the director of the intelligence service of the Second Continental Army of the Republic Militia. The Marxist press and the Communist News Networks are constantly bombarding the American people with lies and propaganda in order to demonize real Americans, to demonize American patriots, to demonize the American militia, so that you're all eventually afraid to support the causes and the principles and ideals that you were taught to support as a child growing up, that you know is the right thing to do, but now has become politically incorrect. Why? Because the United States of America is scheduled to disappear into one of the ten regions of the New World Order. The Constitution will become a dim memory in the minds of all of us. And the new history books will make no mention of liberty or freedom. Our constitutions, our bills of rights, our creators... Even the word God will disappear. Politicians, ladies and gentlemen, are controlled through the accumulation of dossiers by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, by the way, which has absolutely no constitutional foundation or authorization for its existence. The Internal Revenue Service, which is a legal fiction, which does not exist as an agency of the United States government or as an agency of the Department of the Treasury. If you don't believe me, check the United States Code for the organization of the Department of the Treasury or the organization of the entire United States government. You will not find the Internal Revenue Service listed anywhere as a part of any organization of the United States government or as an agency of the United States government. The Central Intelligence Agency, the Mossad, MI6, which is British Foreign Intelligence, the Anti-Defamation League of the secret society known as B'nai B'rith, the KGB, and other Illuminati-controlled organizations. 
These dossiers are used to blackmail these politicians into towing the line. Those who do not have incidents in their past that allow control by blackmail are put in positions by one or more of the above organizations that know how to manipulate human nature better than you can possibly even imagine. And it results in one or more incidents which will allow control by blackmail of these people. If they step out of line even once, something is handed to the press or brought out on the news that causes that person tremendous embarrassment and could and sometimes does result in the end of their political career. The Las Vegas brothel run by Bob Lazar, Robert Lazar, was found to have video cameras throughout and was used for the collection of information with which to blackmail politicians, military personnel, and anyone else who needed to be controlled by the Illuminati. Anyone who will not play by the Illuminati rules are weeded out and quickly disappear from politics. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that it was 33rd degree Freemason Franklin Delano Roosevelt who created the Federal Bureau of Investigation, instituted the first run of socialism in this country. The FBI was run by 33rd degree Freemason J. Edgar Hoover. The FBI and the Internal Revenue Service are, in fact, the political Gestapo for the Illuminati in the United States of America. The end result of all of this will be the destruction of the sovereignty, constitution of the United States of America, and the formation of a world totalitarian socialist government. All those in and out of government who support the policy of one world government are knowingly and willingly engaged in high treason. Regardless of what you have ever been led to believe, listen to me carefully. Senator Joseph McCarthy was absolutely correct. And in fact, the recent opening of the files of the KGB proved that he even knew the exact number of communist agents who had infiltrated our government. The revelations of history, the records of the KGB, and the recent release of the National Security Agency's deciphered cables to and from Moscow by the Venona Project have vindicated Senator Joseph McCarthy. He was destroyed by the Marxist-owned and controlled news media and Hollywood. The branding of anyone who dared to expose communists and their goal of the ultimate destruction of the United States of America as McCarthyites ensured the opening of our government to the subversive agents. Infiltration and rapid takeover of our government took place by Marxists and communists over the intervening years, and they are in control today. And listen to this very carefully. Those of you, those of you, ladies and gentlemen, who believe so strongly in the book of Revelation and the King James Version of the Holy Bible and other religious and our superstitious people who believe in prophecies of Nostradamus and many others and think that you really have deciphered all of these things and you know exactly what's going to happen and when, you are being intentionally led into a state called Millennium Fever so that you will offer no opposition to the New World Order while you calmly await the workings of the hand of God and the arrival on this earth of whoever your particular Messiah happens to be. And oh, they're going to give you a Messiah. Oh, yes, they are. And we covered that in a previous episode. Your philosophy is you're not going to lift a favor no matter what happens. You're not going to do anything because you believe that it's all being brought about by the hand of God. And that you know this because you have read the inspired prophetic revelation of God. But apparently, and especially if you're a Christian, you don't even read or understand the teachings of the man you purport to follow. Jesus said this, and I'm paraphrasing it, but I'm absolutely accurate, that when you think He is coming, He will not be here. He said He would come like a thief in the night. And even the elect will be fooled. Well, ladies and gentlemen, fools abound. I see books all over the place purporting to be explaining to you what's going to happen in the near future. Deciphered from the prophecies of Nostradamus. 
all telling you what I'm telling you, but telling you that you cannot resist it because it is the fulfilled prophecy, the prophetic revelation of God. Well, it's not. It's being brought about by flesh and blood men who are creating events to make you believe that it is the fulfilled prophetic revelation of God. So that you will be rendered impotent, harmless. You will not lift a finger against what is coming. Nostradamus wrote his quatrains in a code which has never, ever been deciphered by anyone. Never. Understand that. Remember what Jesus said. Even the elect will be fooled. That is also repeated in the book of Revelations. Even the elect will be fooled. And I know that most of you think you're the elect. And I can tell you right now, you have definitely been fooled. And there's more, ladies and gentlemen, much, much more, as you will come to realize on your own over the coming months and years, especially if you've listed listened to these broadcasts beginning Monday and continuing through today, you will be able to recognize things now that you could not recognize before. The news will make more sense to you, and you will begin to understand what's happening in the world and why. You wonder how all this comes about. Well, it's pretty simple, folks. If you don't believe me, believe the President of the United States of America, President Woodrow Wilson. He said this, quote, There is a power so organized, so subtle, so complete, so pervasive, that they had better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it, end quote. Woodrow Wilson said that, President of the United States, trying to give us some idea of what is happening. Those of you who think that history is boring, <laughs> you're going to find the future extremely exciting because you thought history was boring, because those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. History is replete with whispers of secret societies. Accounts of elders are priests who guarded the forbidden knowledge of ancient peoples. Prominent men meeting in secret who directed the course of civilization are recorded in the writings of all people. Plato spoke of his initiation in the great pyramid at Giza where he went in and came out a god. Do you understand what I'm telling you? The oldest of these is the Brotherhood of the Snake, also called the Brotherhood of the Dragon, and it still exists under many different names. The Brotherhood of the Snake is devoted to guarding the, quote, secrets of the ages, end quote, and to the recognition of Lucifer as the one and only true God. Now, of course, that's a metaphor, ladies and gentlemen. If you do not believe in God, Lucifer, or Satan, you must understand that there are great masses of people who do, and who believe in and follow the metaphor which they represent. I don't believe in racism, but millions do, and their beliefs and actions based upon those beliefs will always affect me. Especially me, because I'm married to a Chinese woman. And we are the brunt, the target of racist attacks. We know all about it. And whether I believe in it or not, it still affects me. Because somebody else does. So don't dismiss something because you don't believe in it. If somebody else believes in it strongly, especially a lot of people, it's going to affect you, especially if they come in to any power whatsoever. It is clear, ladies and gentlemen, that religion has always played a significant role in the course of these organizations. The secrets of these groups, they say, are thought to be so profound that only a chosen, well-educated few are able to understand and use them. These men use their special knowledge for the benefit of mankind. At least, that is what they claim. 
But if you follow their machinations throughout the history of the world, you'll find that death and destruction follows their manipulation of the human race. I can find no benefit. Only death, destruction, pain, suffering, tears, and poverty. And how can we take their word for anything since their knowledge and actions are secret? Fortunately, folks, due to people who diligently research and dig, people like me and many others, some of it has become public knowledge. I found it intriguing that in most, if not all, primitive tribal societies, all of the adults are members of secret societies. They are usually separated into male and female groups. The male usually dominates the culture. Surprisingly, this exactly resembles many civilized secret societies. It can only mean that the society is working not against established authority, but for it. In fact, it could be said to actually be the established authority. And I'm going to tell you that today that is absolutely correct. This would tend to cause some to remove the validity of any argument that all secret associations are dedicated to the destruction of properly constituted authority. This can only apply, of course, where the secret society makes up the majority or entirety of any people which it affects, but only a very few fall into this category. It does not apply to us. Secret societies, ladies and gentlemen, in fact, mirror many facets of ordinary life. There is always an exclusivity of membership, with the resultant importance attached to being or becoming a member. Remember high school? Remember the popular clique? This is found in all human endeavors, even those which are not secret, such as football teams or country clubs. This exclusivity of membership is actually, ladies and gentlemen, one of the secret society's most powerful weapons. There is the use of signs, passwords, and other tools. These have always performed valuable functions in man's organizations everywhere. The stated reason almost always different from the real reason for the society's existence is important. It can be anything, but is usually fraternal and is found in all pressure groups wherever people congregate. Members of the clique or the brotherhood receive special favor. They receive contracts when others do not. They win legal battles in courts of law, sometimes apparently for no lawful reason. The comradeship is especially important. Sharing hardships or secrets has always been a special thrill to man. It's why gossip spreads throughout a neighborhood or a community so quickly. No one who has ever undergone the rigors of a military boot camp is ever likely to forget the special feeling of belonging and comradeship that was shared between the victims of the drill sergeant or company commander. It is an emotion born of initiation. The most potent tool of any secret society is the ritual and myth surrounding initiation. It is also a teaching tool, but only for those who can decipher the specific meaning of the symbols involved in the rituals. These special binding ceremonies have very deep meaning and cause a long-lasting bond between the participants. Initiation performs several functions which make up the heart and soul of any true secret society. Like a military boot camp, the initiation into the armed forces, important aspects of human thought that are universally compelling, are merged to train and maintain the efforts of a group of people to operate in a certain specific direction. Initiation bonds the members together in mysticism. Neophytes gain knowledge of a secret, giving them 
special status, they think. The ancient meaning of neophyte is planted anew or reborn. A higher initiation is in reality a promotion, inspiring loyalty and the desire to move up to the next rung. The goals of the society are reinforced, causing the initiated to act toward those goals in everyday life. That, ladies and gentlemen, that brings about a change in the political and social action of the member. The change is always in the best interest of the goals of the leaders of the secret society. These leaders are known as adepts, or priests. This can best be illustrated by the soldier who is trained to follow orders without thinking. The result is often the wounding or death of the soldier for the realization of the commander's goal, which may or may not be good for the overall community, and certainly was not any good for the soldier. Initiation, ladies and gentlemen, is a means of rewarding ambitious men who can be trusted. You will notice that the higher the degree of initiation, the fewer the members who possess the degree. This is not because the other members are not ambitious, but because a process of very careful selection is being conducted. A point is reached where no effort is good enough without a pull-up by the higher members. Most members never proceed beyond this point and never, ever learn the real secret purpose of the group. The frozen member from that point on serves only as a part of the political power base, as indeed he has always done. You may have guessed by now that initiation is a way to determine who can and cannot be trusted, who can understand the symbolic education given to them, and who wants to be a part of the goals of the order. The mystery is that religion is but a tool to control the masses. Knowledge or wisdom is their only God, through which they believe man himself will become God. If they believe that and they profess to be a Christian or to believe in Jesus or in the God of the Bible, the Christian Bible, they are unbelievably arrogant in making this statement. They are also in complete and total rebellion to God. For what did God say? He said there is no other God but this God. You'd better read your Bible if you're a Christian and you believe that someday you're going to become a God. If you're a member of these secret societies, and you profess to be a Christian, you cannot be both. Because one is a lie, and the other is the truth. No part, ladies and gentlemen, if you believe that there is a God, you must believe that if there was nothing in the beginning, And God created everything that there is. The only thing that there was to create everything with was God. So therefore, each individual human being must have, and as Jesus said on more than one occasion, a part of that divine substance within. That has to be the case if you believe that in the beginning there was nothing except God and He created everything from what there was, which is Himself. But understand this. No part can ever be equal to or greater than the whole. No small portion can ever stand up to be equal to or to be God. Understand that. And I don't care who you are. If you really believe that you're going to become God, 
as man, according to the philosophy, the Luciferian philosophy of the mystery schools, you have deluded yourself. You have been deluded. And someday you're going to understand just exactly how much you've been deluded. Shirley MacLaine ran along the beach shouting into the wind, I am God. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley MacLaine gets up in the morning just like every other woman on this earth. She looks in the mirror and she says, Ah, another wrinkle. Oh, no. And she takes her face with makeup to hide it all because she's getting older. She cannot create a universe, never will create a universe. She's going to grow old and she's going to die. In the meantime, she has to pay her rent and her bills and she has to make enough money to make sure that she can. She has to get along with her neighbors and with society as a whole. She may have fooled herself, or somebody else may have fooled her. But I have not been fooled. Shirley MacLaine is not God. And neither are you, and neither am I. And not a single person listening to this broadcast or out of earshot of this broadcast. Not one human being is ever going to be God. Period. End of subject. It is the height of insolence and arrogance to even consider that such a thing could happen. The snake and the dragon, both the symbols of these societies, are ancient symbols of wisdom. Lucifer is nothing but the personification of the symbol, the metaphor, so to speak. In the Bible, it was Lucifer who tempted Eve to entice Adam to eat of the tree or the fruit of the tree of knowledge and thus free man from the bonds of ignorance according to their belief. Now remember, the worship, which is a lot different from study of knowledge, science, or technology, is Satanism in its purest form. And its God is Lucifer. Its secret symbol is the all-seeing eye in the pyramid. Ladies and gentlemen, undesirable effects of secret societies and their aura of mystery has sometimes given them the reputation for being abnormal associations or at the very least strange groups of people. But whatever their beliefs are, those of the majority, they are no longer considered antisocial. A good example is the Christian church, which was at one time a secret society persecuted by the government of Rome under the Roman Empire. In fact, the open, friendly, secret society actually ruled most, if not all, of the known world at one time after that. Most secret societies are generally considered to be antisocial. They are believed to contain elements that are not liked or are outright harmful to the community in general. At least that used to be the case. And it is exactly the case in some instances. For instance, communism and fascism are secret societies in many countries where they are prohibited by law. The Nazi party in Germany sprang out of the Tool Society, which is a secret society created by the old Teutonic Knights who escaped the persecution as members of the Knights Templar. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that the Nazi party sprang out of the Tool Society, that Adolf Hitler was a member and follower of the occult tradition of the mysteries. In this country, the Nazi party and the Ku Klux Klan are secret societies due mostly to the fact that the general public is disgusted by them. Their activities are sometimes illegal, thus the secrecy of their membership. The early Christians were a secret society because Roman authorities considered them from the start to be dangerous to imperial rule. The same was true of the followers of Islam. At least some of these true believers working in secret accomplished what would turn out to be the eventual good of society. 
the Drusid and Yazidis in Syria and Iraq consider the Arabs a dangerous secret society dedicated to the takeover of the world. The Arabs today think the same of the Jews. Catholics and Freemasons used to have precisely the same ideas about each other. And in many primitive or backward societies, initiation into the highest degrees of the group involved subjection to trials which not infrequently resulted in death or insanity for the candidate. It can be seen, ladies and gentlemen, that social right and wrong is not the yardstick in estimating the value of a secret society. In Borneo, initiates of hunting societies consider it meritorious and compulsory to hunt heads. In Polynesia, infanticide and debauch were considered essential for initiation into their societies, where the tribal code needed members who indulged in these things as pillars of society. Now, since the beginning of recorded history, governmental bodies of every nation have been involved with maintaining the status quo to defend the establishment against minority groups that sought to function as states within states or to oust the constituted authority and take over in its place. A good many of these attempts have succeeded, but have not always lasted. Man's desire to be one of the elect is something that no power on earth has been able to lessen, let alone destroy. People will go to the most unbelievable lengths in order to do something that they know is wrong, if they believe that their friends and neighbors and relatives will approve of it. It is one of the secrets of secret societies. It's what gives them a political base and lots of clout. Members often vote the same and give each other preference in daily business, legal, and social activities. It is the deepest desire of many to be able to say, I belong to the elect. I am God. I wield power in this community. The most important of all of these ancient groups is the Brotherhood of the Snake or Dragon and was simply known as the Mysteries. The Snake and Dragon are symbols that represent wisdom. The Father of Wisdom is Lucifer, also called the Light Bearer. The focus of worship for the Mysteries was Osiris, another name of Lucifer. Osiris was the name of a bright star that the ancients believed had been cast down onto the earth. The literal meaning of Lucifer is Bringer of Light, or the morning star. After Osiris was gone from the sky, the ancients saw the sun as the representation of Osiris, or more correctly, Lucifer. Osiris was represented by the sun. That's a quote from Albert Pike. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Fred Giddings, Symbolism and Occult Art said, It is claimed that after Lucifer fell from heaven, he brought with him the power of thinking as a gift for mankind. Most of the greatest minds that ever lived were initiated into the society of mysteries by secret and dangerous rites, some of which were very cruel. Some of the most famous were known as Osiris, Isis, Sabazius, Sybil, and Eleusis. Plato was one of these initiates, and he describes some of the mysteries in his writings. Plato's initiation encompassed three days of entombment in the Great Pyramid, None of the great pyramids were ever tombs, ladies and gentlemen. They were always, from the beginning, temples of initiation. Plato's initiation encompassed three days of entombment in the great pyramid, during which time he died symbolically, was reborn, and was given secrets that he was to preserve. For the three days he lay in the sarcophagus, and that's the true purpose. Plato's writings are full of information on the mysteries. Manley P. Hall stated in his book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, that, quote, the illumined of antiquity entered its pyramid of Giza portals as men. They came forth as gods, end quote. I say they came forth as men, 
deluded to believe that they were gods. The ancient Egyptian word for pyramid was kuti, which meant glorious light. Mr. Hall says also, quote, the pyramids of ancient, the great Egyptian temples of initiation, end quote. The first secret, ladies and gentlemen, that one must know to even begin to understand the mysteries is that their members believe that there are but few truly mature minds in the world. They believe that those minds belong exclusively to them. And so, they believe that all of the rest of us are nothing but stupid animals. To be shepherded, to be sheared, and if necessary and when necessary, to be led to the slaughter. I hope that these last three hours have caused you to become illumined. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and God bless each and every single one of you. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there's a loud knock on your door. Hey, honey. Something's not right. And I'm from the IRS with a power to tax. Did you got a complaint? Spend <laughs> the tax. Get out of this house. Surrender your taxes. Give me your gold. You may obey if you want to go home. Answer this now and do what you're told. Hillary Salala, Reno Janet Dyke, reading the words of General Albert Pike, demonic founder of the Ku Klux Klan, engineer of the Masonic Master Plan. Pike said, Lucifer is God across this land. And put the same take the mark in your right hand. While well, we're all dancing with the drums of up for right, Clinton's preparing it for another huge tax hike. Order. Order out of chaos, depression, inflation, create the panics and rape the nation. Order. Crisis creation. Incite black and white programs and education. Oh, my past. You're surrounded. By the UN in white and blue. The ATM, the men in black, and the one world order. But it's not new. Iron Mountain, Computer Beast, and Cattle Mutilations. Black projects, UFOs, and weird genetic combinations. The Nazi doctors didn't die. Come on, get here. They came here with the OSS through Operation Paperclip. National ID, debit card? Yeah. Vaccination biochip, milk carton kits, genetic engineering. Clinton says her health plans for you and your own good. Sure. And Adolf Hitler's Robin Hood. For who? The sonic mind manipulation, inciting riots, is crisis creation. Biochip implantation, vaccinate your kid for UN identification. This is a test for all of us. So I have today just one simple request. A comprehensive package of health care benefits that are always there and can never be taken away, never be taken away. Atmospheric, social illusion, media hype, plan confusion, Masonic religion, it's a liar. Got your brain for a Luciferian Messiah. You've been listening to the Hour of the Time with yours truly, William Cooper. Be sure and tune in tomorrow at the same time for another broadcast of the Hour of the Time. You're listening to 101.1 FM Eager, your nonprofit community service radio station.
Sweetheart.